Megan is approaching the age of 30. She is quite concerned that she does not know what she wants to do with her life. That's a whole other video. I'm not going to get into that. Hello, my name is Megan Ruth. I'm a Canadian living in London, England. I've been here for a few years and I love making videos about my life here in London and British culture. So I thought I'd have a sit down conversation with you all today. Well, I mean a conversation means that you would be talking back, but maybe not a conversation. Maybe just sit down and talk to a camera type of day. <laughs> I don't know. Um, it's been about a year since I started this YouTube channel and I thought I would do some reflection on my time here in the UK and basically answer the age old question, where is my future headed? Like, do I plan on staying here in the UK indefinitely? Will I ever go back to Canada? Um, I also kind of want to touch on the visa that I'm on now as well um, and my path to citizenship if I so choose to go down that path but I kind of wanted to touch base a little bit and reflect. I kind of have a few objectives with this YouTube channel. Um, you know, I initially started it because I wanted to kind of document my life in the UK and my life in London um, as a more of like a video diary type time capsule element of it. And then my British culture videos kind of blew up, so I started making a little bit more videos about those, and those are a lot of fun to do as well. I initially started this YouTube channel for that purpose, to kind of reflect um, on my time here in the UK, document my life here in the UK. But I've also had a few messages from people who said that watching my videos actually inspired them to move to the UK, and that's just amazing to me. I'm so grateful <laughs> um, that I you know, could have that sort of impact on someone. I didn't think that would be the case when I started this channel, but I'm so grateful that um, you know, that's come to fruition that, you know, people are watching my videos and thinking to themselves that they want to do this too. Um, I also think that that is amazing and everybody should move over somewhere, you know, not necessarily to the UK, but I think people should move abroad at some point. Everybody should move abroad at some point. I feel like that's my philosophy now. <laughs> I, you know, I just think it's one of the best things I've ever done is move abroad, um, move to England and London and all that. So I'm very grateful for what this channel has become and I don't know what the future of it is, to be honest. Like, will I be making videos about my life in London indefinitely? Will I be uh, staying in London indefinitely? I don't see myself living in London, you know, for the rest of my life. I, you know, I don't. I don't see myself being an 80-year-old grandma uh, in, living in London and taking the tube. I just, I don't know. I think, I think by the time I'm 80, I'll probably want to be in the suburbs somewhere, or maybe, I don't know. Granted, that is quite far off. I don't need to be thinking about that yet, but um, I just, just genuinely I don't see myself living in London for the for the whole of my life that might change I might change my mind you know when I'm 50 and be like yo I'm gonna be in London anyway like who cares I'm gonna be an 80 year old grandma <laughs> taking the tube I don't care <laughs> I don't know but that's just where my head is now I, you know I love London for now I love London for the age I am now for being in my late 20s for kind of still discovering myself and uh, you know having that uh, atmosphere around me, being a 10 minute walk to the South Bank, being able to see theater all the time, find new and exciting, uh, you know, bars and clubs and pubs, you know, it's, that's, that's what I like doing right now. But I don't know if that's going to be the case, you know, later on the line, probably not the club thing. I highly doubt I'll be 80 years old at a club. I mean, to each their own, but I'm just saying. I doubt I'll be clubbing when I'm 80 years old. And that brings the question, do I even want to be in the UK? you know, when I'm 80 or 50 even, do I want to be living here? And I mean, the short answer is yes. Currently, I would like to stay here indefinitely. My current plan is to get dual citizenship between Canada and the UK. And of course, when I'm rich and when I'm able to afford it, have a house in both countries. Just be able to fly back and forth to Canada whenever I want to. That would be the dream. <laughs> Obviously, you know, that's a pipe dream and it's probably not gonna happen. I'm probably not I'm gonna end up being like a millionaire or something as much as I would like to. Uh, all I can do is like really work towards my goals. Um, I'm still trying to figure out what those are 
right now. That's a whole other video. What does Megan want to do with her life? Anyway, <laughs> I get distracted easily. I have my moments of I want to do this and then I change my mind like the last second and decide, no, I want to do this instead. So who knows what I'm going to want to do, you know, in four years. And it's in four years is when my visa expires. The Ancestry visa that I'm on now is only available to Commonwealth citizens who have a grandparent that was born in the UK. You need to supply documents such as the grandparent's birth certificate, grandparent's marriage certificate, parent's birth certificate, parent's marriage certificate, just so you can prove that your grandparent was born in the UK and that you are in fact the grandchild. <laughs> so it's a little bit more tricky to get than the youth mobility visa, um, but if you have all the documents, it's actually pretty straightforward. I was stressing the fudge out, <laughs> mainly because I was worried I wasn't gonna have enough money saved up. I think me having a job in the UK, I, I provided proof for my employer that I had a job in the UK. That helped me loads, um, honestly. My ancestry visa was Quite simple to get, but it was a little bit more meaty and way more expensive than the youth mobility visa because you're not only paying for the visa, you're also paying for the health surcharge. I can't remember off the top of my head. I actually got it right before it went up. So it went up to like 624 pounds in October of 2020. And I applied in September of 2020. So I got it a bit cheaper, but now it's extortionate. I mean, it's always been extortionate, but they just keep making it more extortionate. So yes, it is 624. I just went on the government website and clarified that it is 624. So that's 624, 624 pounds per year that you're there. So that's 624 multiplied by five for a ancestry visa, which is five years. But at the end of that five years, you can apply for indefinitely to remain and then eventually citizenship. So there is a pathway to citizenship from ancestry, um, which I most likely will probably take. And I only say probably because I don't know what's gonna happen in five years. I don't know, or four years now. I don't know where my head is gonna be, you know. Do I wanna be in the UK? Yeah, most likely, you know, weighing all the pros and cons. I think the pros outweigh the cons for me. Being able to travel throughout Europe all the time, you know, being able to go to the theater all the time in London, having London here. If I were to move out of London, I probably won't be too far outside of London just because I love you know what London has to offer. I love being able to go see the West End and all of that. The arts and culture in general in London is just exquisite. NHS covering prescriptions, covering birth control, although I don't think I'll need birth control when I'm 80, but I, you know, who knows? I might be fertile when I'm 80. You never know, you never, actually no, you, you do know. Science, <laughs> science knows. Pub culture as well is, is a big thing for me. I love how it doesn't get as cold as it does over in Canada. It gets like stupidly cold, like negative 30 degrees, and I just can't deal with that anymore. Uh, it also gets way too hot too, so there's more extremes. It gets way too hot, it gets way too cold. Yes, I am away from my family, so that is a huge con. I think that is the biggest con, that is like probably one of the only cons, is being away from my family, being so far away that I have to buy an expensive plane ticket to go see them and uh, vice versa for them. They have to do the same for me. It is what it is. And if I prefer my life over here, every decision you make, there is going to be a negative impact. There is going to be a consequence with every decision that you make. And you need to understand and know which consequences you're willing to take. <laughs> Who knows what's gonna happen in f four years? I mean, four years is actually not a lot of time to be fair in the grand scheme of things. Four years is not a, long, a lot of time, but it is for me in the sense that I still have like a decent amount of time to figure out what I wanna do. Also applying for indefinitely to remain is also expensive and that keeps going up every year for some reason. The Tories, honestly, they do not like immigrants. I'm not putting my political opinion on anybody, but generally speaking, mm, Tories, not a fan. Anyway. And that was kind of my sit down and be real with you. I didn't write any notes. I probably should have wrote, written notes. I was just spewing from my ass a lot of the time. That's it for me. I hope you did enjoy it, I guess. I don't know. It's a, ugh, ugh. Anyway, <laughs> hope you're having a good week. Bye. Mwah.